For the past year, I've used audio glasses to hear my surroundings whilst on the bike, walking the dogs, or really any outdoor activity. It's great for music, podcasts, and audiobooks. But for the past month, I swapped my $400 Bose Tempos for the $40 Liku C8s. With five hours of audio playback and polarized lenses, there must be a catch. And there is. <laughs> G'day, I'm Cam. And I just had to buy these when I saw them. Like, how are they so cheap? To give some context, a pair of replacement lenses for my Bose ones are $50. The whole glasses here are cheaper. Like, how? Now, they're not perfect. There's definitely some issues, and one of them may be a major deal breaker for you. So, I'm gonna break down my findings into three segments. Whew, good thing they wrapped it in a uh, bubble wrap to protect this box from getting damaged. They're by Liku, which in the fine print says powered by Lenovo, Lenovo's smart lot brand. So, I have no idea what to expect because apparently they're also polarized, and at like 25 bucks, it makes no sense. It has a hard case. Cleaning cloth. Damn, they're light. What the heck? There's nothing here. These feel as light as my normal sunglasses. How is there speakers inside? To pair, the instructions state to simply enter pairing mode. <laughs> what? It turns out that if you turn them on and no device auto connects, then they auto switch to pairing mode. Connected. All right. You can only connect to one device at a time and you must manually disconnect to switch devices, which won't really be an issue if you're only using a phone on the go outdoors. The Bluetooth 5 connection also pairs super quick to a previously paired device. I was pleased at the five hours of playback of podcasts at full volume from the built-in 120 milliamp hour battery. I found some listings claiming it's got a USB-C port. That's incorrect. If you remove the protective cover, you'll find micro USB. I also logged a charging time of one hour and 10 minutes. The LED indicator turns from red to blue when fully charged, but I did notice a bug where it reports 90% battery when fully charged. The power button on the base of the right arm also doubles as multifunction, where a single press will play pause media, but a double tap doesn't change tracks. It actually summons voice assistant, which technically you could ask to change tracks. But I don't like using voice assistants in public. I'd much prefer to just be able to double tap and go to the next song. Having voice assistant is useful though, because I use it to prompt a smart garage door add-on unit when riding home. Now on the side, there's a T in a circle icon logo. I'm not sure what relevance this has to a brand starting with L. Maybe let me know in the comments below if you do. Either way, this is a capacitive touch button. So with each tap, it goes a volume up increment and pressing and hold will go volume down. These also have built-in microphones. So you can tap the physical button to answer a call or the T to decline, which I find is risky because it's really easy to actually tap the T when you're trying to find the physical button. Either way, if you're chatting someone, a physical button press will end the phone call. Okay, so build quality. I like them. They've got an ABS material frame, which although it's really lightweight at 31 grams, it makes them feel so light on the head that if you jump around and shake your head, they're not going anywhere. But the standout has to be polarized lenses. And we can confirm this because if you tilt them off axes with a monitor, it crosses with the polarized filter on the screen. So although you're not intentionally staring at the sun, you may be looking at it from glare, especially from water reflecting back up into your eyes. Polarization helps protect you from that. Now, speaking of water, they're not water resistant, except for Banggood's listing, which actually says that they're water resistant but nowhere else says they're water resistant. Not in the official product images or even on the box that it came with. Now the bows, however, are water resistant. So I decided I'll try and open them up and see if I could find a water resistant seal. Now there is foam on the LED section and at the ribbon cable that connects to the arm. There's no other gasket or sealant. Everything else is just press fitted hard plastic against hard plastic. And so from that, I wouldn't say these are water resistant. It also took me way too long to realize that I didn't have to walk around like an old man with reading glasses if I popped inside for a snack and I could just chuck them up on top of my head and I could still hear what's going on. That's freaky, it actually works. I've simply never worn my bows like this because I didn't want to risk them falling off my head. Uh, so if they weren't on my face, they were in their case. I paid for it because I went to take my hat off last weekend, they fell off, hit the ground and I've scratched the lenses a little bit. And so I was right to predict that would happen to the bows because these didn't last long. And that takes us to my main benefit of these glasses. They fit where normal glasses go. If you haven't seen my video on the Bose Frame Tempos, my main complaint or issue is that trying to slide these down my full face helmet, it puts a lot of pressure on my temple, which is super dangerous if I fell off and hit my head. Whereas these, having skinny thin arms, they're so easy. They just fit in. But do skinny arms give us skinny sound? Well, the product listing states that they have a wide sound field and strong bass effects, bringing an audiophile level music beast. But then the box says that there's a frequency response of 180 hertz to 20 kilohertz. <laughs> 
if you don't know, all normal headphones are like 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that's like a literal bass frequency cutoff. And that's a music fee. So what does it sound like? Take this with a grain of salt, but here is the Liku versus the Bose. Now it's obvious that these won't sound better than the Bose, but I wouldn't say that they have no bass. And so I pass that recording through a visualizer and we can see that the bass kick drum is below 160 hertz. And so the box must be wrong. However, it doesn't seem to be wrong about the total harmonic distortion of 10% because they don't sound great. Causing music with intricate details to be lost and they just have like an overall hollow sound. But this doesn't really matter if I'm exercising. If I'm out riding, I just want to beat a rhythm, something to sync up and push my pace to. And the same goes of voice. I'm not expecting high quality audio from a pair of glasses. I just want to be able to hear the words of a podcast or an audiobook. However, after many hours of use, I discovered a fatal flaw. Okay, I think I figured it out. Let's do a test. When there's a gap for over two seconds, then the glasses kind of sleep and they miss the words. Now, if we normalize the audio in the gap, we'll find that there still is sound. Seconds. But audiobooks, they just delete all of this with the noise gate. So now, two seconds. It's dead silent. And I think this is why it's disconnecting. All right, I've just sent the file to my phone. Let's play it back through the glasses. When there's a gap for over two seconds, glasses kind of sleep and they miss the words. It misses then. Oi, let's have a look. You can compare the waveforms. Dude, this makes so much sense because the podcast I listen to, they don't apply post-processing. You can hear the environment in the background, what's going on. But with audiobooks, they're cleaning up the audio. They're getting rid of any static sounds between voice and between chapters. And so if they start a sentence with a name or a day, you just don't hear that word. And so it might be like, Barry said this. And then, but all you hear is said this. You're like, who? Who said it? <laughs> what do you mean? What are you talking about? From my computer. I just kind of sleep and I miss. And so that rules out that's an issue with my phone. It's just the device. I'm not excited for the flaw in the product, but more so that the theory in my head actually worked and made sense. So I realized if we to do a sound leak test, this is front onto the microphone and this is uh, off the side. They're kind of like using a VR headset. People around you can hear what's going on. It's quite loud up close. It's real easy for me to hear that. So if someone's sitting next to you, they'll hear what you're listening to. The other main open ear option is bone conduction. I tried these in stores and I wasn't a fan of the vibration against my skull. And anytime I'd be wearing those would be outside, which is when I'm already wearing glasses, which is why I've just fallen in love with audio glasses. As a 40 buck pair of polarized glasses in general, I'm happy to wear them. So having the added ability of turning on and using Bluetooth, it's nice to have. Literally 10% of the price is probably the perfect pair to give this tech a crack. I just wish the Liku C8s didn't have that two second nonsense. If you liked today's video, thumbs it. If you loved it, sub it. Then check out my Bose review up there or a tech project down there. Thanks for watching. Bye.